Hello, I'm Zizad and in this video I will show you how to downgrade your PlayStation Vita system software from version 3.67 or 3.68 to an older version, such as 3.60 or 3.65. First, as you can see, my device is currently running the version 3.68, so in theory I should not be able to use the Henkaku Enso um, custom firmware for your PlayStation Vita, because this version is too new. Um, if your device is currently running version 3.69 or 3.70, then you are not able to follow this video as of now. You will be able to follow this in the future. Um, another thing we need is, um, at first we need this H and Core bubble. I created a video in the past how to create or transfer this bubble to your PlayStation Vita. Even if your Vita is not hacked or nothing at all, the only things you will need to do is to follow the video and to follow the instructions that are linked in the video. It's linked to a GitHub website and it tells you exactly what you need to do. So if you are unable to follow the video, just uh, keep in mind that in the description of that video there is going to be a link and it, the link will tell you exactly what you need to do. So um, I'm going to start now. I assume your version is 3.68 or 3.67 and I assume you already have your aging core bubble. If you do not, you should pause the video, watch the other video and create your own ancient core bubble. <clears throat> First you start the agent core bubble. <clears throat> then you click install Hankaku. And if your device is currently um, if you do not have the Vita Shell bubble on your device, then you can just click download Vita Shell. This requires an internet connection, so just enable Wi-Fi uh, before you want to do this. I already have the Vita Shell bubble on my device, so I am not going to do this. <clears throat> okay, now we should be able to start Vita Shell because we used our aging core bubble and because we installed Henkaku. I find no. <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is we transfer our um, Modoru VPK file onto the PlayStation Vita. The Modoru um, file is going to install the Modoru bubble and with Modoru we are going to be able to downgrade our PlayStation Vita system software. And to do this we have to connect our PlayStation Vita to a computer and we can do this by if you press start in Vita shell you can either decide if you um, want to have the game card SD Vita or something um, to connect to your PlayStation uh, to your computer from your PlayStation Vita, and um, the select button can either be used for FTP connection or USB connection. Since USB is a bit easier to use, or um, we're just going to use um, USB. So if you press select, it says connect the system to a PC using USB cable, and that's what we're going to do. And then the next step is going to be on the computer. Okay, on the computer we'll need a few things before we can um, start transferring files to our PlayStation Vita. And as you can see, this is my PlayStation Vita over here. Um, at first we're going to need the Modoru files that were released by, by the flow. And as you can see, there's a lot of text here. You should read all of this text because it's important. Because if you ever run into a problem or you can't continue with what I'm going to show you, then the solution to this should be somewhere in this FAQ. Um, at first we need the Modoro VPK file, so we just click on it, download it, and we're good. And we need the firmware file we want to downgrade our device to. Since my zload.net website is currently offline, due to certain reasons, we have to use our Darth Sterney's website. And since most of you will um, want to use the version 3.65 because of the and Kaku Enso custom firmware, just enter 3.65 over here where it says complete official firmwares. Then we can click on it and it will redirect you to this mega website where you can download it. Um, I'm not going to download this because I have all the files on my um, HED, but if you want this, you just click download, wait, and then you're good to go. Um, I have mine here. And then you get something like this, PlayStation Vita, OFW, 365 complete. You open it, and then you have three files, pre, system, and nothing at all. Basically, you need the file that is not pre and not system, so we're going to open this one. It'll take a while, but then we have this file, which is called psp2updat.pub. We copy it next to our Modoro VPK file, extract, 
There we go. Now we can close these, we don't need them anymore. And then we have to move the Modoro VPK file onto our PlayStation Vita. And we have to move this one in the second step. So we can't move it right now, because if we remove it right now, it's going to be deleted for a few reasons. Okay, we click on um, our PlayStation Vita that we connected. For me, it's this one. Then you can just create any folder. I created a folder called VPKs, but you could also just create a folder and name it whatever, test or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then you copy the file onto our PlayStation Vita. Then next on the PlayStation Vita we have to install the Modoro VPK file and after we did this we have to go back to the computer and move a file from the computer back to the PlayStation Vita. Okay, back on our PlayStation Vita we should now see our new folder which should be here under test. If you don't see this, you will most likely be in this directory here. And if you are, you just go to UX0, press X, and then you should go look for your test folder, which is this one. Now we can click on the Modoro VPK file and install it. This one says it wants extended permissions, etc, etc, so we can just go into install it. If you press X and allow to install. Um, if this installation fails, then you will have to go into the settings app and enable unsafe homebrews. So essentially, if it does not allow you to install that file, you go to the settings app, then you go to Hankaku settings, and then you tick enable unsafe homebrew. Because if you do this, then you will be able to install the Modoro VPK file. I already did this, that's why I don't have to do it right now. And then we should be getting this Modoro bubble. Um, before, we're going to start the Modoro bubble, we have to go back into Vita Shell and now we have to copy the um, firmware file. We could not copy it beforehand because installing the Modoro bubble will delete a folder which we otherwise would have created ourselves. So we have to install the Modoro bubble first and then we have to add additional files to that bubble. It's a bit tedious but whatever, we have to do it like this. So essentially what we're going to do is, on the computer, we have to go into app and then into the Modoro 000 bubble and then we add our firmware file to this one. So we press once again select and we connect our Vita via USB cable to our computer and then we copy a few files. Okay, back on our computer, we have to once ago go into the folder which contains our firmware file for me it's this one, now we copy it, and we go to our PlayStation Vita. Um, as you can see, we cannot, we cannot see the um, app folder. That has a few reasons, because it's a protected system folder. So we just click at the top, as you can see, now it says uh, G, and we just add app after it, and then we should be able to enter the directory G slash app. And as you can see, we have our Modoro 000 folder over here. We click onto it, and then we paste our firmware file. This shouldn't take too long. File is around 127 megabytes. And if we're done with this, we go back to our PlayStation Vita, and then we can finally downgrade our version from 368, 367, whatever, to an older version, such as 360 or 365. Okay, now we're done, and now we go back to our PlayStation Vita to continue and finalize the downgrade. Okay, now we can um, finish the last step we have to do on the place in Vita. We can once again first confirm if our file is successfully copied. So we go back into app, we go into Modoro, as you can see we have the file in here. So we basically are good to go. But before we do this, we have to reboot our device before we can use the Modoro app. Because we used Vita Shell and the Modoro app doesn't work properly if we used Vita Shell beforehand. So we go into the Hankaku settings and then we just reboot the device. This is now going to reboot our PlayStation Vita. And you have to keep in mind that since we do not have a permanent hack on the Vita, after rebooting the Vita, we have to once again use our agent core bubble. Then we have to launch Hankaku via the bubble. And then after we're done, we simply launch our Modoro bubble and can downgrade our PlayStation Vita. There we go. Install Hankaku, success, exit, 
And now we should be able to use our Modoro bubble. Um, keep in mind that your battery percentage has to be at least 50%, otherwise this is not going to work. And as you can see, current FIMER 368, target FIMER 365, and it asks, uh, tells us if we are really sure if we want to downgrade. We press yes, X. Um, then a disclaimer, the software is per making permanent modifications, so if anything goes wrong, it's your own fault, and there's currently no way to recover the device. It's going to be bricked, and that's it. Also, the author of the tool is not liable for any kinds of damages. So if you did something wrong and the device breaks, well, it's your own fault. But we should not have done anything wrong, we should have done everything properly, and we can just press X to start in terms and start the installation. <clears throat> and then we just have to sit back and wait until the downgrade is, well, completed. You essentially just wait until this is done, and essentially when this is done, your device will reboot. It might tell you your database is corrupted, but that's normal. That happens when you um, when you downgrade a version from a higher one to a lower one, just like when you update from a lower one to a higher one, that the database is going to update. Um, the step takes a while because it's first is copying the PSP2 update file from the um, one directory to another one and then it's starting the system update as you can see right there right now and it's starting the system update I'm not sure if you have to confirm any terms or some stuff like you usually do when you update your device I hope you don't it should automatically start and then after a few seconds it should be done and when it's done it should simply just reboot the device and then you should be running the older version and when you're running the older version, such as 3.6.5, then you can simply install the uh, Henkaku Enso permanent hack, and then your PlayStation Vita is running a permanent custom firmware with, um, with a bootloader hack. So every time you reboot it, it automatically starts back into the custom firmware. So you won't be able, well, you won't need the Agent Core bubble anymore. It's still recommended to keep a copy or a backup of the Agent Core bubble. Um, either on your computer or in the Vita itself, the bubble is not that big, so it's, it has a small file size, and since it has a full file size, you essentially just keep the bubble on the device, because if you ever accidentally upgrade, that bubble is going to help you to downgrade once again, assuming you're just upgrading to a version that is still supported by the Agent Core hack, which currently does not apply to version 369 and 370. Those are currently not, well, redeemable. But if a future hack is going to be released, then you will be able to use this Modoro downgrader on a higher version as well and downgrade back to 365 or whatever. Okay, the downgrade is now successful and the device rebooted. As you can see, okay, it's updating the database. Um, earlier today I downgraded from version 365 to 1.69 and it told me database is corrupted, but I guess that's just because it's such a big uh, difference regarding the versions. And now we should be able to see that our device is running version 365. And there we go. We successfully downgraded our PlayStation Vita from version 368 to 365. Now, since your device is running version 365, you can install the Henkaku Enso permanent hack. So you can just simply follow yet another video. And if you do this, then you will end up with a PlayStation Vita that has a permanent custom firmware on it. So yeah, I guess that's it, and I'm the dad, and see you soon.